Hey, Legendary Family, and tonight the dark planet of Dathomir is about to get a rude awakening. You see, this planet is usually known as a dark side planet, right? Because of all the dark energy and dark magic that takes place in here. Or I should say the dark side energy or the dark side of the force, stuff like that. You know how Star Wars works here. However, today we're going to be throwing in a predator of unmatched proportions, the mighty Goliath. We're going to be putting at least eh, 10 of them. This is because we don't really know how their reproductive cycle works, but we do know that they lay eggs. Big eggs, too. Like, humongous eggs just for, probably from the adults, but then again, that means the adults are a lot bigger than we perceive them, but... We're just going to go ahead. We're going to use Meteor Goliath as well here, as you guys saw on the thumbnail here, because I do think he is the most suited for this environment because of his coloration, his pattern and stuff. Now, if you guys want a full scale for how strong Goliath is and Meteor Goliath should be way stronger than that, um, just go watch my Godzilla minus one versus Goliath video. All right. So without further ado, let's talk about it. How would Goliath do on Dathomir? And we're going to look at this from three perspectives, okay? And this is because Star Wars has a lot of factors that play into it here. Before I get to talk about those, Goliath has his rock throw, which can, you know, obviously cause massive explosions. Fire breath, which can actually burn opponents even though, you know, he stopped blasting his flamethrower. He has a heat crash ability where he's able to create giant craters of, well, fire by impacting them. Probably channeling plasma through his fist and stuff and just, you know, impacting it. And then he also has his charge ability. But as for the three categories, we're going to be looking at it from prey, okay? Prey, competition, and then we're going to talk about the long-term effects. Now, this is important, especially with the last part, because the long-term effects for a Star Wars verse is very important here. You see, animals, even in Star Wars, also play a factor into how things go, even for things like the Jedi and even the Sith, as the Sith were known to implement biological warfare by even creating dark side monsters and stuff like that that were even meant to prey upon the Jedi. Even having a Hydra that freaked out any jedi that would ever come across it <laughs> so with that being said here goliath should be fine with the environment of dathomir i mean there are deserts volcanoes and even the arctic it was confirmed to also be in the evolve or the planet of sheer i should say here so dathomir's environment which is a desert canyon i believe it is especially going by the you know last jedi game and stuff like that it seemed more like a desert canyon than an actual just barren desert like tatooine albeit tatooine does have you know rocks and stuff like that there but dathomir does have water it does have you know it's dark like forest here and goliath will be thrown into here as again his meteor form with his blue fire blue flame blue you know earthquake smash or fire smash or whatever but now let's begin with the easiest part prey now this is basically everything that goliath could eat however we also have to focus on one big fact about goliath he is a super predator now super predators were known to prey on just about anything and dathomir has no shortage of predators or prey items okay it's it may look like a Grand Canyon, but its wildlife population functions like um, Africa. It's very interesting here. You do have your smaller creatures like the pig rats or the pig rodents, whichever one they decide to call them here. But these small creatures are really just not too nutritional. They're like some of these smaller or the viper wolves of sheer and stuff. Goliath would just grab them, eat them, call it a day. There are various other smaller creatures like Bulmas, Verif, Vor, no, Vorithor, that <laughs> took me a bit, Vorithor lizards, okay? Those guys are interesting. They're, me they're like a medium range predator, but again, compared to a stage one Goliath, they are small here. There's also one more amphibious crocodile-like predator that inhabits the swamps of Dathomir, which, again, would be an easy snack for Goliath. I don't see any reason why. But keep in mind, Goliaths do have a sense of smell to where they can map out their environment and find any prey within that radius. 
Now, some of the upper tier prey items will account as the giant worms of Dathomir, or at least the more mountainside ones. The ones on Dathomir are apparently smaller than the ones on um, Tatooine, I believe it was. It was another desert planet outside of Tatooine, but they had these giant worms that were also capable of burrowing through rock. But the Dathomirian ones are just smaller, so they'll probably just be like a quick noodle from some, like some ramen noodles. Then you have the reptilian flyers, which are again like the reapers, so not really too nourishing. So let's talk about the ones that are nourishing. The Dathomirian boars are pretty common among the Dathomir, actually hunted by the Dathomir and Night Brothers. So you'll probably have some interspecific competition or again, interspecific bullying where a Dathomirian boar will get preyed upon by multiple Goliaths. Then you have the Braxy, highly armored herbivores and the, I'm probably going to say this wrong, the Malkov. These Malkovs are like so big and so massive that they were almost the top tier creature of Dathomir until the Rankers. Now, another creature I do think, or another two creatures that I think would be easy prey would be the Nidax and the Baneback Spiders. Now, you see, Nidax themselves are top tier carnivores, second only to the Rancors here. However, they're not in that same light as even a stage one uh, Goliath. Now, they are known to live somewhat solitary lives, probably only coming together during mating seasons here. And that does hurt them a bit here. Because again, we do know that younger members of the Goliath species or even younger members of any monster in Evolve are pack hunters which is very important, especially if they want to take down something like an alpha herbivore, like a crowbill sloth, a scarab beetle, or the canyon strider. And considering the sheer fact that Goliaths start out as ambush predators when they're in their stage one states here, that makes it a problem for a Nidak because they'll bother camouflaging before getting them. Then adding their fire, their superior strength, or their close in power strength depending on where you think a stage one is i think a stage one is at least building level but then you also have stage twos which get it up to a, at the very least large building to low city block level and then you have the sheer fact that they are also pack hunters but they can run down their prey however you have the adult stages of these goliath species these stage three levels where they're gonna just grab a nidak crush it and then just take it home to eat or might just eat it right there, depending. So they passed the first round with ease. But let's talk about competition. Now, this one is more of a potential thing than anything. And the important part about this is these are the only two creatures I could actually see giving Goliath at least enough trouble to where preying upon them does cause some risk or they can actually have a somewhat of an injury from them. Number one is obviously the Rancors. Now, Rancors, believe it or not, are common among, well, the Dathomirian planets. <laughs> and it's actually funny because they were traded from Dathomir to be scattered throughout the area. And they're some of the best survivors of all time. And, um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> video coming up, survival video. <clears throat> so, with that being said here, Rancors being the well epitome of a great and adaptable predator they would definitely give the goliaths a hard time or at least a decent challenge before they at least hit the adult stages and are able to adjust to how rancors are then you have gorgala or the um chirodactyl <laughs> these guys are just giant flesh-eating bats that's all they are and believe it or not, yes, they are lightsaber resistant to a degree, except for some certain areas here. However, due to the pack mentality of younger Goliaths, them still being some of the smartest, if not the smartest predator on Dathomir outside of the Night Sisters and maybe the Night Brothers, because let's be real, the Night Brothers are not that intelligent unless they get amplified to that level. But again, stage one and stage two should have a relative easy time here. Stage threes are definitely going to be the ones aiming for things like Rancors, Malkovs, Bat Brack Seats, and um, I could definitely see them taking out a Chirodactyl every now and then. So they pretty much live here on Dathomir pretty easily. 
Now, let's talk about the long-term effects of them being on Dathomir. Now, the Night Sisters pretty much run the planet. I think that's pretty common amongst Star Wars fans. There should be no disagreement about this. With Mother Towson being the head. Now, again, we are going to have this take place in the Clone Wars era because, again, this is where the, you know, things could change here. Now, the Night Sisters are known to utilize and practice magic, which is very common, which allows them in the Legends comics, apparently, to tame Rancors, which I find pretty interesting. Why can't they do that in canon? Like, they use Nidax as well, so it's kind of funny. But we're going to count it here. Because, again, this could actually play a way to, well, get Goliath on their side. Getting a heavily armored and pretty much blaster-resistant beast on their side early could actually have some long-term effects here. Now, while I do think the Nice Sisters would find a way to communicate with Goliath rather than trying to control it, because I think trying to control it would probably piss off the species more, the Knight Brothers would probably see them as a rite of passage or flat out the devils of their region. Now, the reason why I'm saying it like that is because the Knight Brothers are known to use Chirodactyls as a rite of passage, being able to go into the beast territory and eventually and hopefully come back alive after what? Maybe spending one night there, but most of them don't make it. So the way they would probably do this is they would probably find some way to use Goliath as a part of their traditional means only for Goliath to likely rip a Knight Brother apart and drag it back. But maybe they would probably find it some way to actually like outcast weaker members of their society into these like territory into like the territories of Goliaths. And then having the weaker members just get devoured. And I don't know. They would have to find they would probably find some way to incorporate Goliath into their society, just as they done with every other creature. Baneback spiders are their pecs. Then you have the sheer fact that um Nidax in combat are seen as a rite of passage. So they can kill one, then they're kinda like one of them or something like that here. It's been a while since I played the game and pretty much looked at it thoroughly, but it is what it is. They actually use Nidax as like a rite of passage, so it is it is what it is. <laughs> so, with that being said here, what happens when Grievous invades the planet? Well, if the Night Sisters do not find a way to communicate with Goliath, with the Goliath species, I should say here, then, well, everything happens the same. Believe it or not, I think the Night Sisters had a pretty good chance if they just kept on fighting and if they used their environment instead of just being idiots. Like, it's kind of dumb how they didn't play into their own environment where they had a home turf advantage against Grievous and used their magic to their fullest capabilities. However, let's go to the other one. They actually are able to communicate with Goliaths and at the very least not control them, but befriend them. This plays into a whole nother ball game. Grievous has no chance. He already lost to Ventress. Now, adding these super strong, semi-indestructible, semi-immortal creatures, all right? Capable of burning down entire cities, wiping them out, tearing through their metal and steel, being able to take the most advanced weaponry that at least their year has to provide, which is 2030. And again, keep in mind, they've developed inter interstellar, excuse me, space travel, can utilize lasers, poisons, and various other things as projectiles. Even having hooks strong enough that a single person could bring in a sperm whale at the size of Moby, like the size of Moby Dick. So you want to tell me that these monsters aren't advanced enough to handle what a stormtrooper or a drone's blast? The Night Sisters will become an absolute unstoppable force when it comes to warfare, at least on their own planet. This also flips things for Sidious here, because Mother Towson wouldn't die, the elderly um, Night Sister, witch or whatever, would not die either, and then you have the sheer fact that Goliaths will probably become the guardians of the planet rather than the monsters or the devils of that planet. Again, their higher intelligence, their high levels of intelligence would definitely put them on the sentient list 
And this would probably influence the Jedi to possibly make an alliance with the Night Sisters. And I mean, it's not impossible, considering the fact that Mother Towson was able to match Sidious himself. And Sidious needed Count Dooku to back it up. There was a lot of factors playing into Mother Towson's death here. But again, Sidious was stalemating her. Or she was stalemating Sidious. Again, he was trying to kill her. And yet she was able to match him in a force clash. <laughs> Imagine now they have these creatures that can't be controlled by the force because they, again, they are sentient. They're more dominant than the Rancors and the Chirodactyls. And now they understand warfare, like more than they do back on Sheer. Now, in Sheer, they understood that they were being hunted and that they were the planet's natural response to getting rid of these humans. However, now put them in an area or a scenario where they're having to basically be war creatures and war beasts. And they have to defend their planet on a warlike level. There wouldn't be any, and I mean any possible chance for the night sisters to get slaughtered they wouldn't they would literally have to build the death star and try to blow up the planet but lo and behold the evolved monsters like behemoth and the host survived the destruction of a planet known as factor and then landed on the planet sheer much like the monsters or the creatures from the um which am i call it the uh not tomorrow war the um quiet place all right so Giving that to Goliath, the Empire would probably be done for if the Night Sisters decided to team up with the Jedi and then later on maybe utilize Goliath in war for different functions. So with that being said here, that's what I think would happen if Goliath was on Dathomir. Could he survive it? Yeah. Oh, he's thriving. He's um he's definitely king of the planet after this. But that's all I got to say here, you guys. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it to friends. And stick around to the end of the video for the next Monster Survival video. Peace.